Ice Integration Workshop 5.2, Literacy and Numeracy. Okay, so we're going to talk about mathematics and numeracy and English and literacy programs, but to start off with, this one's going to be about mathematics and numeracy. Now, mathematics and maths online are two fantastic programs that you can use to help out with your maths um, in classes. The mathematics, uh, mathematics is basically an online tutor, so students can get on and log in and work their way through all the course and if there's any issues the students can get the the mathematics would say you seem to be getting having some issues with uh, this do you want me to give you a hand and they'll actually tutor the students as they work through maths online is also a good tool as well where your student the teacher can set the work same as mathematics and the students will can progress through it so this frees up the teacher to go around and help students one-on-one -on -one while still giving the the questions to them one like one at a time i'm not going to show you how to do this because but unfortunately both of those need a subscription they're both very common mathematics tools um, in classes and schools uh, more than likely your if you're doing maths your math coordinator or math lecturer would have told you about them but something to keep in mind when you're doing stuff now GeoGebra is another math tool and then gapminder we're going to go through but let's do GeoGebra first so this is GeoGebra um, it allows me to get on and do some very quick graphs. Um, you could be used for maths or whatever. Basically, you click down here and start cre uh, create GeoGebra. We can do where you can create a book or whatever. But so I've clicked on this, and here I can put in any um, equation I want. So if I go y equals x, immediately it draws the graph for y equals x. Um, I can then plot another one. So if I want to look at y equals 2x you can see it'll plot the graph now here i can actually very quickly look at how this changes all right so it allows you to really compare graphs very very quickly um, i'm very impressed how well it works to give it uh, make it a slightly harder graph y equals uh, x squared well it's hard to do x squared um, and here it's saying that's not really right but if i go down here i can click on x squared or i can do x squared like that so you can see it's drawing it. or I go x cubed and then I might go oh, well let's see what happens if we add on uh, take 2x oh, so they can uh, take 4x maybe All right. so they can go oh well that's interesting and then they go uh, plus 1 oh, plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 oh I see so as we change this the constant at the end we're moving it up and down the up or down the graph and basically change the x-axis. So it allows students to really understand how the graph goes. Now alternatively, if I just get rid of these, hmm, that's weird. Um, I can actually plot points instead. Right, so I might actually plot a point here and plot another point here. Right, so there's my points pod. And you can then just join them. Now the good thing about that is it then gives you the formula for the graph. So if students are plotting points for their science experiments, um, you can then use that to determine, uh, use this to calculate the line of the graph. So again, you are not necessarily, uh, you, you do take something away from students who are uh, using graphing and learning the physical ability to draw a graph on graph paper with pen and paper. However, um, you are then using, getting the computer to do the work and then letting the students use their brains in a sense to understand trends, understand what they're seeing um, to overcome the graphing that they may have issues with. So that's GeoGebra. It's a really great tool, fantastic for all different subjects. And yeah. Now, Gapminder. Gapminder is a uh, tool that was uh, initially designed by a guy by the name of Hans Rosling who unfortunately died, uh, I think last month, it's only very recent. Now he's basically created this, this graph here and it is a graph of all the data drawn from different countries in the world. Now, up here you can see each country is represented by a different color. Also, um, each country here is represented by a dot. The size of the dot is the, number, is the population size at the time. Um, so this here, we've got life expectancy and income per person. Right, now I can actually change this to be life expectancy versus children born, like children per women. 
right? And so this will change my graph now. It will load it into here, and it's drawing on all the data from all the different countries in the world um, into this map. All right, so here we've got um, I've got linear graphs. So number of children, right? So here you can see China has uh, 5.5 children and life extent. You can see it was uh, 32 in 1800. All right. Now, what's cool is I can actually change this and go up to let's say 1820. Right, so 1820. So you can, and so you can then have a look at this. Now, realistically, uh, one graph from another it doesn't really tell you something. However, if we click on play, it will actually take you through the dates as we go along. I'm just going to slow it down a little bit. So you can see 1830s, 1840s. Um, you can see really it's Europe having a bit of a bit of a um, interest here. This is skipping a little bit. This is unfortunate. Just going to stop. All right, so going through 1890s, 1900s, and now we're seeing 1912, 1920s. You see in Europe there was a big drop, in the, and again in the 1940s because of the First and Second World War. You see all the ch children born uh, is going to the left because there's less and less children being born uh, per woman, and their age expectancy is going up. You can see now this is where we're sitting as we get towards the end of the 20th century and into the 21st century. Everything's moving up. You still have all of the African countries doing quite poorly, well, by comparison. Um, or they've still got lots of children, but their age limit is, is quite low. So um, it, it's a really great tool and it really allows uh, 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 students to pull their own data, really. They can really analyze it themselves. Now here I'm just going to go back to, if you're struggling a little bit at the moment. I'm just going to change that to logarithmic. All right, so here you've got life expectancy and income per person. Now just for fun, I'm going to have a look at Australia. So if I click on this, it just shows Australia. All right, it just highlights Australia. Now if I play, right, now you see we go through 1800s, I'm uh, still looking at income per person. Now you see Australia is getting richer and richer and richer and richer, um, or sorry, income per person is going up. And at one stage, in right about here, I'm not sure where, it was around about there, um, you have Australia's income was actually, income per person was actually higher than anywhere, anywhere else in the world. Right? So here, we were, on average, in the 1880s, the richest people in the world in a sense all right and per person um, because they had gold rushes and stuff like that and here you see Australia life expense is going up uh, up and up and up is where our standard of living is getting better um, the rest of the world is following suit as well again you saw that big drop from 1919 for the first world war you see it drop again for the second world war um, Australia's going up moving around so income's still going up but now you see the rest of the world is following when we're slowly being overtaken by uh, North America, um, a lot of Europe, a lot of the green, like which is the uh, Kuwait, Iran, Iraq, and all the um, and Saudi Arabia, and all the wealthy um, oil producing countries. Right, but there you see the how Australia's fared. So basically, it's a really good tool. It allows students to come up with lots of different data on their own. They can take screenshots. They can look at it um, and. In here, you've, uh, you can map anything you want. So education, uh, education, maybe uh, literacy, and then literacy of uh, total, basic percent of people ages 15 or above their literacy rate. So there's so much depth in this tool. So great tool, fantastic for humanities, fantastic for maths analysis, even science. Um, yeah, so a great tool. Yeah. So. That is the mathematics and numeracy. I'm going to stop now and do a new video for English and literacy.